Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the AGS Transact Technologies Limited Q2NH1 FY24 conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant clients will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this call is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ravi Goel, Chairman and Managing Director, AGS Transact Technologies Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, very warm welcome to each one of you and thank you for joining our Q2 and H1 FI24 earnings call. On this call, I am joined by our CFO, Mr. Saurabh Lal, Executive Director, Mr. Vinayak Goel, and Executive Director, Mr. Stanley Johnson. The Indian economy is growing rapidly and with it, the demand for financial services. It is crucial that technologically advancement, technological advancements evolve in a responsible manner and are truly beneficial to the people at large. These developments come about as a combined effect of digital public infrastructure, institutional arrangements, and policy, policy initiatives. They help foster a conducive environment for nurturing creative ideas and promoting transformative technologies, which lead to beneficial and impactful changes in the financial industry. We at AGS Transact are at the heart of these changes in the ecosystem with forays in traditional cash management as well as digital payments via our PPI license and on-go framework. The currency in circulation stands at Rs. 33 trillion as of 30th September 2023. It is projected to reach Rs. 35.5 trillion by the end of 2024. On the digital payment front, UPI continues to make waves globally. Over 11 billion transactions worth Rs. 17.16 lakh crores took place via UPI India in October 2023. The reason for this, sustain, for this sustainable growth and the driver going forward is the growth in percent to merchant transactions. The growth of open-loop prepaid cards, which provide an increased level of convenience for customers as a whole, is one of the most, most emerging trends that we have seen. An industry study indicated that the Indian prepaid card market was likely to witness a compounded annual growth rate of 40.5% between the years 2021 and 2026. And the trend is already visible in the country. This is primarily due to the increase in internet and smartphone usage, as well as the robust growth in the e-commerce sector. Offline payments for multimodal travel are now made possible through the use of the National Common Mobility Card, or NCMC, which is backed by the Rupay platforms. Commuters can, commuters can now can use these for making payments across metro stations in the country and soon for the other modes such as bus, suburban railroads, smart city, retail, toll, and parking. As on today, more than 23,000 NCMC's cards powered by AGS Transact have been issued for Bangalore Metro Rail Corporation. Coming to the ATM business specifically, several leading private and public sector banks are expanding their bank branches this is a very healthy sign for industry as every branch requires at least one on-site ATM and about two off-site ATMs with and with our Pan-India presence, it augurs well for us to capture this growth momentum. 
Further, during H1, FY24, we have seen total RSPs of 41,400 plus ATMs and CRMs, and we are confident that the demand will continue in coming quarters. Cash recycling machines or CRMs are finding strong favor with all the leading banks and are being adopted widely. This can be seen even in our operational metrics where wherein CRMs are under our management have grown from over 4,002 quarters back to 8,247. We are confident that the rapid adoption and transition to CRMs will continue. The cash management market, which includes ATM cash management, retail cash management, and dedicated cash in transit vans, amounted to rupees 3,920 crores in 2023. Encouragingly, research indicates that this market is set to expand significantly, reaching rupees 7,900 crores by 2027, presenting potential growth opportunities. From a company standpoint, point, we have focused on further streamlining our overall business operations and services. We had a flat performance last year owing to multiple challenges in the macro environment, slower uptake of some initiatives, spillover of our uh, order book, and some loss allowances. Strategically, we are focused on improving our business line efficiencies and effectiveness. Last quarter, we announced that we have received authorization from the RBI to issue co-branded prepaid cards in collaboration with our partners. We remain focused on enhancing customer experience across our payment points through our offerings such as on-go pause and open loop prepaid cards, etc. Overall, in Q2 FY24, we serviced approximately 4,86,453 customer touch points across 2,200 cities and towns in India during this quarter. We provided cash management services to more than 40,152 ATMs and CRMs through our wholly owned subsidiary Secure Value India. As on 30th September 2023, AGS Transact Technologies has installed, maintained, and managed a network of approximately 77,685 ATMs and CRMs. Our CRM network is expanded to 8,247. Our ATM outsourcing and managed service business complements cash management business, which is housed in our standalone entity. I am pleased to share uh, that we have completed the integration of all the 8,000 ATMs slash CRMs one recently, and they are expected to add to our revenues and provide us scale benefits in the coming quarters. This is testament to our timely and efficient execution capabilities, which will augur meaningful benefits to the company going forward. We are op optimistic about securing additional contracts to expand our portfolio, which will in turn also provide synergy benefits for our cash management business. Cash management industry, which is driven by ATM rollouts, is expected to grow at 4% CAGR, especially as leading banks are stepping up their rollouts. Another factor is the growing demand for outsourcing as banks look to focus on their other core and profitable operations. The proportion of ATMs slash CRMs being outsourced for cash management is expected to increase to 70 to 75% in the medium term. Since cash logistic is a high operating leverage business which favors scaled players, it is very positive for a player of our size and scale. Talking about our sales mix for the quarter, the ATM outsourcing business, which is on a transaction or on a fixed fee basis, contributed approximately 52% of our quarterly top line. Another 12% of the top line came from AMC services and updates, 
our cash management subsidiary secure value india which serves as which serves a mix of captive and non captive atms contributed 14% of the top line from the non captive atms in line with what i have mentioned above we have scaled down our low margin product business as a consequence consequence of that our service revenue has inched up by 3% year on year a depiction of our gradually changing revenue mix and in line with our strategy for q2 fy24 service revenue contributed accounted for approximately 98% from a way forward perspective we see ourselves continuously expanding our atm and crm network on the back of the rfps being floated in the industry the cash management business and building upon the ncmcs powered by ags transacts in line with our objective to pivot from payments as a service to payments as a convenience now i would request my colleague saurabh lal CFO of AGS Sandak Technologies to share the financial highlights of the quarter and half year gone by. Saurabh, over to you. Thank you, Ravi. Good afternoon, everyone. Continuing from the operational highlights and major development that happened over the quarter and half year gone by, I would like to take you through the financial performance of the company. In quarter two of FY24, the total income of the group. Two debt to be three thousand eight hundred eighty six million INA versus four thousand two hundred and six million INA in quarter two FY twenty three. The reduction in top line is the consequence of scaling down of our product business, which was functional in the corresponding period last year. However, in connection with this, we have also observed a simultaneous reduction in various associated costs also, which has helped us to become more efficient in our operations. Sequentially, the top line grew by two percent from three thousand seven ninety four million in quarter one FY twenty four, despite phasing out certain businesses lines that we have discussed. Talking about our EBITDA number, the adjusted EBITDA for the group in Q two FY twenty four stood at rupees nine thirty eight million as against rupees one to one thousand two hundred thirty five million in quarter two FY twenty three. The corresponding figure for Q1 FY24 stood at rupees 1030 million the adjusted EBITDA margin for Q2 FY24 stood at around 24.1% as against 29.4% in quarter 2 of FY23 and 27.1% in quarter 1 of FY24 uh, 20, uh, uh, 24 similarly the numbers for H1 FY24 are stacked as follows The revenue for the semi-annual period stands at rupees seven thousand four hundred seventy-seven million versus eight thousand three hundred and eleven million in H1 and FY23. The beta stands at one thousand one hundred and ten million in H1 FY24 against the corresponding H1 FY23 figure of rupees two thousand three hundred and eighty-three million. Coming to the adjusted beta. The figure for H1 F4 FY24 is rupees 1,968 million versus rupees 2,505 million in H1 FY23. During this semi semi annual period, we have taken some provisions towards the 450 million worth of receivables that had been accumulated over a period of time. We have also made a provision of about 395 million towards. Uh, Commitment fee, which we are hopeful of reversing in next few quarters, subject to successful negotiations with which are underway. If this charge gets reversed in subsequent quarters, we will have a quarterly co- co- charge of around 60 million per quarter for next two years. As we have been highlighting over the past two quarters, we have been scaling down of some of our business lines. As a result of which, certain direct costs have reduced. And certain interest costs are expected to get pruned in the subsequent quarters as well. Our finance costs have stayed flat sequentially and stand at rupees 367 million as against rupees 367 million in quarter one of FY24. Our net debt stood at rupees 6479 million at the end of H1 FY24 as against rupees 6769 million as at the beginning of this financial year. 
From profit of the tax perspective, we recorded a loss of rupees 609 million in quarter two FY24, as against profit of 207 million in quarter two of FY23. Talking about of our segmental performance for the quarter, our payment solution business contributed 87% of our revenue in H1 FY24. This segment includes cash solution segment accounting for 68% of total revenue. This covers ATM and CRM outsourcing and managed services and cash management business also. The growth is largely driven by expansion in all these business networks. The cash management solution segment will grow in line of with ATM outsourcing, which is already captured in ATM outsourcing growth. Currently, we are the second largest player in the market. We leverage this as the market is looking for a strong compliant player. The digital solution contributed 19% to our total revenue. This includes revenue from post machines, switching, transactions, and transit solutions also. We are aiming to leverage our PPI license and ongoing digital strategies as we go forward. Our banking automation solutions comprises of sales of ATM, CRM, and other currency technology products, self terminals, and their upgrades and AMCs. This segment contributes 11% of our total revenue. Lastly, the other automation solution business segment, which encompasses the sale of machines and other related services to customers in retail, petroleum, and color segment, contributed 2% of our total revenue. With this, we conclude our presentation and open the floor for further discussion. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchtone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mr. Darshit from Robo Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hello. Am I audible? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I needed uh, POS and SVIL revenues for Q2. Okay. Okay, that's it. You can go ahead with the other question. Or, or, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, got it. So, uh, my second question is, uh, reported... On reported basis, uh, our EBITDA uh, in the range of 24-25%, how it has been uh, for some time, uh, do we see that from Q3, do we see that happening from Q Q3, or are there any provisions yet to be taken apart from what you already specified? Sure. So, that's why I go one by one, sort of the effect from EGA. Okay. So from the pause revenue basis and on the digital revenue which you see is constituting around 19% of total revenue. Out of this, 19% represent in the in the value terms is around 761 million rupees. In this 761 million, the pause revenue is 470, uh, 468 million rupees, and the balance of the revenue comes from other digital solutions, which is transit solutions, and most mostly from the transit solutions and other pause business, other switching businesses which stands as 293 million. So okay. total revenue for pause is 761 million for this quarter. On okay. the share value side, the cash medium business, the revenue for this quarter is 511 million. Okay. And this is this is the net revenue after removing AGS as a, uh, uh, as a related by transaction. Otherwise, the gross revenue for secure value is at 1,116 uh, million. Okay. 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 Yeah. So now coming to the second part, uh, Rashid, with respect to the beta margin, if you see the overall from the company's standpoint of view, the adjusted beta margin of the company is varying between the range between 25, 26, 27, and we have seen the highest of 29.9 percent also in the previous quarters as well. But considering right. those factors and the various business that we are scaling down a period of time, which we have started doing in the last one year specifically where we are scaling down certain other automation businesses, 
Now, revenue has definitely scaled down immediately, but there are certain costs which we have already started reducing and started pruning. But there are certain cost benefit, and, uh, certain cost I would say, which for which the benefit is yet to come to us. So I think within the next couple, one quarter or two quarters, we'll see more benefit coming from the cost which are directly associated with the businesses which we have already scaled down or have already move to the next uh, closer stage. So those some benefits are yet to come. So they're definitely as, as soon as we see those benefits, there will be definitely increase in the certain percentage of basis to the company's performance. Otherwise, from a business perspective, the, the beta per percentage we expect and continues to see that this this should uh, stay in this, this zone only. Okay. So in the 24-25% range, it can stay mm -hmm. going forward. Yeah, that's it. Okay. And uh, uh, secondly, uh, what would be your gross uh, debt levels for the next two years, if you have any, uh, if you can give some color on that? Uh, so, that's it. On our, on our debt side, we, we've been keeping a uh, very, very close eye and tap on those debts uh, also. So we have definitely, there is no specific metric, but yes, as an organization, as a company, we maintain certain internal metrics through so that we can keep on monitoring our debt either as a percentage of revenue, as a percentage of uh, net worth, as a percentage of beta. Definitely those, those factors are taken into account. But if you see our debt, we have a most majority of our debt is into a term loan debt and a certain certain portion of the debt into working capital debt. And we, we have a in case of term debt, definitely there is a scheduled repayment plan which is which will go for next one year and two years down the line. So if if, if the con companies continue to generate a similar kind of cash flows that we've been generating from the past or with the expected percentage of beta that we're going to generate in the next quarter or maybe a couple of years, we believe we'll be able to keep on paying those debt from terminal approvals. Having said that, if we see an opportunity coming up in the future to deploy more ATMs, to deploy more growth, to deploy more other businesses. So definitely company would look for all the options to raise this capital, maybe in the form of debt or some other some other financial options available to the company. Okay, so then we might have some more idea going forward in the next two, three quarters, not as of now. Correct. Okay. Uh, and my final question, uh, any revenue and, uh, you know, EBITDA pad guidance for the next two, three years? I mean, uh, if any key drivers do we have and what are we expecting? So, uh, as, as we uh, see, Garshit, most of our revenue is, is into a service-based revenue. So, that, that gives most of us as a company to predict our revenues in the form of that how much service revenue constitutes our business. Because most of the revenues that we get in this business are mostly linked to the contract which are long-term in nature. So, from that perspective, we, are very con we, we have always been confident that this is the amount percentage of revenue or this is the amount of revenue which we can definitely forecast for next year or so. Having said that, definitely there are always an opportunity to grow the businesses, to add more line of businesses. As Ravi has also mentioned, the strategy is very clear to grow ATM, CRM business, cash business, to build more businesses on this uh, line of uh, NCMC card and the on-go issuance card and everything. But Going with a very specific uh, guidance, it will be very tough for us, but I think the company is working closely and monitoring all their, all their business lines and ensuring that we should be able to deliver to the best and considering our position in the market, which is whether it's an ATM business, cash business, we continue to be a leader. We would like to grab the opportunity which is available in the market so that we, we are also going, going growing with, as banks are growing and other institutions are growing. Okay. Okay, but I mean, any any ballpark figure also. I don't need a specific guidance. Just uh, some kind of metric that you have said, like probably say, fifteen twenty percent growth that you are aiming for, something like that. So, that's it. Uh, if you see our financial performance for last two years, three years, which Ravi also mentioned, it, it continues, it stays flattish. And in last couple of, uh, I would not couple of years, last one year, we have taken certain calls where we have scaled down certain operations also. So even even though uh, on a business perspective. The, the company continues to have a very strong contracts with them for one business line, but we continues to take calls on certain businesses which is not generating profit as we, as, as the business are growing. The business has become very, very, I would say, commodity in nature and everything. So from a growth perspective, it will tell, I think the more important factor, which I have explained, I think we are trying to maintain a sustainable beta margin so that company could be able to generate sufficient cash flows for whether it's a repayment of debt, whether it's a... Uh, growth capital, whether it's investment in capital, and and last whatever capital is available, whatever profit is available, they, they can be distributed and shared with the, all the stakeholders. Okay. 
Okay. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Vishnu. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask question may press star and one on their touchtone phone. The next question is from the line of Miss Ruchi Ruchi Gupta from Valpreet Com. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi. Hi, Ruchi. Yes, hi. Uh, so, could you please provide some clarity on our card service business? Uh, from the total addressable market point of view and therein uh, also our scope of growth and potential to capture the same sure ruchi so ruchi in case of cards service business in case of cards service business definitely as you said our strategy is to go go on the on go business which is basically the issuance issuance of the card business is where what we are saying is that we we are providing an New platform, which is called NCMC based platform, which is called National Common Mobility Card business. So that addressable market, as of now, is there are multi multi folds as we mentioned. So there are two business lines that can happen. One is definitely as we already have a PPI license from RBI, where we are issuing these cards, which which can be used by you, me, or anybody else as a person. But our special focus is to build a business model where we can definitely create a very very specific use case or niche use case, which we have done as a first of the kind, you can say, where we have launched this card in partnership with Bangalore Metro and the RBL Bank also, where we are issuing this card, and this card will have a very specific use case to be used for a metro travel in Bangalore Metro. Okay. So that is that is where the focus is. So with this. network as as this business is growing will definitely as could go as we mentioned right now we have only said we have only 23000 cars but just to give you a number perspective bangalore metro is it's a very old metro has a very very large customer base of people who travel and frequently travel the numbers are in millions so definitely this 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 network of card and getting me from the close to to open to will open up a new option for us and as we grow in the market and as as we believe that over a period of time most of these metros in the country will definitely should should always explore the option of getting into ncmc based platform which will become a very convenient from the consumer perspective by taking a one card and that card can be used all across the country so i see that opportunity is to be very many fold so the correct number if i give you any current number that number may not be may not be valid maybe after 3 months 6 months line line because most of the metros i think are would are exploring or would be exploring as and when they are going to change or upgrade their infrastructure specifically from the payment perspective okay yes thank you that's helpful uh, so my another question is uh, Our CRM count is going up steadily. So, just wanted to understand: Are these new CRM machines, or uh, we are replacing existing ATMs and placing the CRM machine in their place? Uh, currently, we have 8,000 plus CRMs right now. Yes. So, how many do we see getting added to our portfolio in next three to five years? So, uh, Rishi, specifically, yes, you are absolutely correct. Most of the banks, when I was the... now being recorded. most 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 of the banks whenever they they are going for either at new atms or new branch networks or new expansion of the offsite atms or even for the replacement or renewal of their contracts so most of the banks are apps exploring the option of putting up the crms at the branch network the, we we service two type of customer one is the definitely new atm that we are deploying for the, from the recording has now ended so for, from branch of the branch operations and second wherever we are taking over the atms uh, crms from the bank so as we speak i think most of the banks over period of time maybe next one year two year as rightly said will definitely explore the op- options for both deploying of the crm at the branch level and replacing their existing atm network with the crm network and that is what is witnessed by us also and i think witnessed by the market also in both the level that is future will definitely will crm because crm once get enabled at the branch level of the full functionality level performs both the activities it performs the withdrawal facility also and it gives the option of depositing and immediate instant credit to the customer so we believe a period of time i think banks will always or will consider the options of putting up a crm at the branch level which gives them the 24 by 7 availability of the atms as as earlier it was and additional facility of depositing this everything in a seamless i would say automated manner for, for the banks also so i think we we see a good future and that is where we are also focusing up to put more and more crm 
and the process and NPCA is also fully geared up where they, 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 they offer the complete seamless end to end reconciliation of all the deposit transactions. Hello? Ruchi, are you there? Ruchi, ma'am. Hello, Ruchi, ma'am. Hello. Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you. That's helpful. All the best for coming quarters. Thank you, thank you, Ruchi. Yes. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Mr. Parth Vasani from KK Advisors LLP. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon. Am I audible? Yeah, Parth. Good afternoon. Uh, hi, sir. So, sir, my question was uh, on the order book side. Uh, could you please help us with the total order book detail? I mean, while we understand that the order is that arrive in the quarter, it would be helpful to understand the magnitude of the business one and, and the business on hand at a given point in time. And also, how much has been already executed so far? Sure. Uh, part from from the order book perspective, as uh, we mentioned, our business is largely service service based business, where we have a consistent long term contracts running with the banks. So, as as we close the quarter or close the half year or maybe the annual accounts, we always know the visibility what is going to approximate revenue for us in the subsequent quarters and subsequent and uh, future periods and everything. So. We, we, our deployment strategy is keep on to keep deploy all these machines for the banks. Uh, from the order book perspective, I think that the num number will be very different from what you see on the growth side. Because as we said, we are deploying the ATMs, we are deploying the CRMs, we are adding those CRMs on the bank network. If you see our uh, current uh, speech also, we have just completed over 8,000 deployment of ATMs slash CRMs for UBI and PNB banks. So this contract was awarded to us in the last to last quarter and which took some time for us quarterly. So as such, from the RFP perspective, PSU perspective, it is very difficult to predict that what is going to be the exact order book. From the private sector wise, bank wise, we keep on getting a running orders from them in the form of new ATMs, deployment of ATM, replacement of ATMs. So as, as we already are very, very dominant player in the market, we continue to get those shares from the existing banks also and whenever any other new PSU's banks or any other PSU's bank goes for a new order book in the market or new replacement or new deployment, they usually follow the concept of RFP based process where we definitely participate. So from a service revenue base, we, we have a, as we close the quarter, we know what is going to be the next quarter revenue, we know the ATM base, we know the CRM base. Incremental number will keep on adding. So it will be very difficult for me to give you any specific order book that we have in hand, unless provided we have a, like in last quarter we could have said that UBI PNB was deployed 50% and 50% was deployed in this quarter. So this is the way you can you can you can track the order book status of the company. Sure, sure, sir, got it. Uh, that was that was helpful. Sir, my next question was uh, on the cash logistics business. Uh, yeah. Would it be possible for you to give a breakup like how much is ATM, how much is non-ATM, and also a historical proportion and trend would also be helpful. So, uh, that's, uh, sorry, uh, part, part, uh, part, sorry, my bad. Part, part, uh, as of now, it will be difficult to distribute, but yes, largely if you see our revenue is coming from the ATM business, and there are certain percentage of revenue that comes from the non-ATM business, Approximately number I will be able to share part. We can take you details and everything, and we'll ask Shikhar other team member to share with you exact details that what is the place. But, but largely, our focus, since it was a, a subsidiary company of AGS and created to use, give the captives uh, support first, so we focused on setting up the nest network which can support the ATM network of AGS as a primary uh, support source of revenue. Over a period of time, now we expanded and almost 50% plus revenue comes from the non-AGS customer also. But at the same time, we are expanding our business reach into various non-ATM based revenues also, where we get in the form of revenue in the form of dedicated cash vans, where we get revenue in the form of doorstep banking and certain other uh, trans transportation of other valuables and other things. But yes, uh, to be very specific, uh, Park will definitely come back to you and give you the detailed breakup that how much is the ATM and how much is the non-ATM. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that is it from my side. Uh, thank you very much and happy. Thanks. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. 
The next question is from the line of Ms. Jia Shah from Wealth Securities Incorporated. Please go ahead, ma'am. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Hi, hi, Jia. Yeah, hi. Uh, so, in our presentation, we have mentioned that we've taken a provision of about 395 million for one-time commitment, and we expect that to be reversed. Could you throw uh, some light on this development, please? Sure, yeah. So, yes, as 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 we rightly right, right, said, we have taken certain one-time commitment charge on the PNL. I just take you to background that there are a couple of businesses that AGS do. Definitely, ATM outsourcing is one of the main core business of theirs. But we also do a lot of other payment solution services. Out of the payment solutions, some business comes from the POS, some business come from transit, and some of the business comes from various other payment solutions that we do. So for that payment solutions, we we have and we have a partnership, I would say, approach or a, a, an agreement with one of the very large global player, with whom we have entered into agreement seven to eight years back. And that agreement has certain certain minimum commitments from the parties from both the sides where both. Both the parties will try to sell this product in the market and make some, uh, and end of the day offer the solution to the market. Now that contract is at the end of the expiry. This contract is still not, uh, has not finalized, been renewed and everything. So since the negotiations between both the parties were still going on, and there is certain minimum commitment that has to be closed, closed a period of time. And since we are already reaching the expiry of this contract, so we discussed this with our internally with the board also and the auditor also, and we thought okay, let's take this provision for a timing. As as the negotiations are in in, in the way with way forward, as as it gets closed and gets uh, finalized and cleared, we may have option of that. We can take this reversal of the provision that we have taken. But yes, as as of today, since there was a commitment as per the agreement terms, we we, we thought that it's be, it will be prudent or conservative on our point. Let's take this provision. And as we see, this contract is getting finalized, streamlined, and closed, renewed, or whatever way we we go forward. We may see a reversal of this cost, and then there will some cost will come as a new revised agreement terms. Okay, so just to follow up on that, so how sure are we about you know this contract going through, and how will our full numbers look like if this provision is rolled back? So, uh, since as we said, this is this is one of the business strategy that we have. We we are we are we are definitely working on to come out with a solution which which is win win for both the parties that we do. Both the parties have invested. Good amount of time over period of seven eight years, we build the relationship with the customers. So we we, we are confident that it, it it should sail through. But yes, since it has not been finalized, the the, the balls remains. Uh, I would say the opportunity remains or option remains open for both the parties. But yes, once it gets closed and finalized, we may see a good amount getting reversed, and then some more will go as charged over period of time. So as of now, what we see that there is a, there will be a reversal possibility of the amount that we mentioned, and there is a charge. That is expected to get to the PNL over a period of next two years. Okay, uh, just a last question. Yeah. Our uh, net debt stands at about uh, 650 crores. Uh, what is our debt repayment strategy going forward, and what is the steady state level of debt we look to maintain, say, two three years down the road? So, uh, GFUC rightly said that net debt strategy of the company is to maintain the debt within the certain uh, internal covenant, maybe the network to the debt. Maybe a bit to the debt level, and specifically, you see that most of the debt that we have raised in the book for a period of time is largely linked to the capex which companies. They are basically long-term debt the company has taken. Maybe to fund the capex of the contract, or maybe to fund the future receivables of the contract. There's a mix of debt, and some portion of the debt lies in the working capital. So as as we go forward, since there is a term debt that we have taken, which has a scheduled repayment plan, we continue to believe that keep on paying those fee payments as as when they fall due. And this payment will definitely help us to deliver ourselves as as every quarter on quarter, every month on month basis. And we believe that this debt level that we are will be a, a percentage of I would say a bit time personal net worth rather than putting absolute number to it. I think that that is what we target to internally maintain. And in next two to three years, if the company continues to generate this much value for beta and continues, to, as I said in the previous question also. That there will be scheduled repayment which we keep on reducing unless and until we see an opportunity coming up in the future which ask or give, give, give us the option to explore some of the options which can be funded through any of the financial institution loan or debt or anything. But yes, the moment we say we have an opportunity in the market, I'm sure those, those opportunities will give us the new revenues, new bit time, new margins and a sufficient cash flow to take care of the additional debt that we want to take in case there are any opportunities that come.
Okay, okay, sir. That was helpful. Thank you so much. Thanks, thank you. Participants who wish to ask questions may press star and one on the touchstone phone. The next question is from the line of Mr. Rahil Shah from Crown Capital at Partners Incorporated. Please go ahead, sir. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Rahil. Yes, hi. Um, so, you mentioned that you have a certain visibility when it comes to the contracts you have from the banks, right? Correct. Um, keeping that in mind, so the last two quarters, quarter on quarter basis, have been flattish. Uh, the June quarter, the September quarter, but now for the remaining part of the year, so uh, what kind of visibility do you have? Do you see a year on year growth for the quarters ahead, or are they still likely to be, you know, flattish? So just a uh, a general sense how the business will be for the rest of the year. Sure. So, right, right, as, as you said, and then, sir, we also covered the, the quarter and quarter and our half year, half year, we saw certain flattish growth. It is primarily, if you see, there, there are three focus areas for which the organization is right now working and ensuring that all that energy goes into that business. One is the ATM outsourcing slash DRM outsourcing business. Second is the cash million business. And third one is the digital payment opportunity where we are exploring and putting up our best foot forward in the form of issuance of cards through Bangalore Metro. And we got, Ravi also mentioned that we got approval from RBI for co-branding card and everything, which, which, which as, as we move forward, we'll see some, some good news in the market going forward basis. So these, these three businesses is where we're going to put focus on that. I think over a period of time, if you see the revenue has actually gone down to some percentage over a period of time, but it, it is again as a strategy of the company, we are already moving slowly on this, uh, phasing out certain businesses that we had in the past, be it the other automation businesses or maybe the other product businesses, where we are moving on. So you may may not be able to see the actual growth in the revenue as we keep on continuing to descale on those side of businesses, but as we said, the focus is on these three business line of businesses, which where we are constantly focusing to grow those businesses. So on overall basis, there is a possibility that or there may, may be you not able to see the major growth. But the revenue mix is to see, which used to be 70% of the service revenue uh, over four years back is now reached to 98% level, which we said. So I think this is the mix which we are working on. I think the more important for factor for all of us internally, me, Ravi, Stanley, Vinayak, Salesh, everyone in the management who is working on is to build up the good profitable business model which can generate a sustainable long-term beta. So that is where right now the focus is. Yes, the growth has to also keep in mind, but I think growth work to targeting is to coming from the either either to give get more scale of businesses from the existing business or to go for a contract where we see a good good profitability that that can uh, act as a I would say complement to the existing business line of the company. So that is that is what the strategy is. But yes, you may have to wait for another couple of quarters to see that where where the business are going in, and then it will be more most confident and comfortable from our side to share with you any specific growth number on this revenue side. Yes, yes, sir. That's what I want to ask. So let's say near term we don't see any kind of growth, okay? But now since you're focusing on these three verticals, uh, so do you have a certain timeline in mind by when these will you know, reach an optimum level and then will start contributing heavily uh, and help the business grow? So that's what I want to understand. So right now you are working on these strategies, but why? By, by when will they reach a certain level that you will be confident that okay, now growth will be seen? So I think I think as a as a company, as I said, uh, right, we have a listing running contracts with the customers where we keep on, you know, which we know that business these businesses will continue to give this much value of expected revenue to us. So that strategy continues to grow. The additional revenues and everything, again, that the growth can, uh, I would say, the the company's performance can be measured through two parameters. One, definitely a revenue growth of everything. Second is how the profitability of the company is improving. So I think if, if, if the revenue growth takes some time because of the right contract or right mix of the revenue, I think the company is working very heavily to ensure that we have a right cost mix also along with that so that the margin should not get suffered, except for these few exception items which we have seen in the last couple of quarters. Otherwise, the business just continue to generate a sufficient amount of cash, and we've seen various heads of issues uh, have got opportunity to study our balance sheet in the last two, three years. There are specific heads like manpower costs, subcontracting costs, other expenses, specific certain specific heads. We have actually worked on very heavily to ensure that we have a right optimized size of all those costs 
corresponding to our revenue. So I think that is that is what the strategy is. But yes, to give give you a very specific answer, I think the comp management knows this business very well. We've been running this three, four, two, three business specifically ATM, CRM, cash management for I would say more than a decade now. I think the focus is to grow that businesses, especially like cash flow businesses where there are very few players in the market who who, are, who can handle this size of scale. So as as one of the question also came in between that our most uh, that most of our revenue comes only from cash based business in ATM. What about the other segment which is also expanding in the market? So we are putting very much focus on to expand other. I would not say tertiary, but yes, it's a complementary business to us in the, to add the, to ATM network because. The ATM network or cash money network works on a very specific root profitability model, or which which needs economies of scale to make it a very very profitable or a good consistent profitable business. So I think this is where the strategies are going on. The business continues to be very strong, but on a growth perspective, I think may, maybe maybe next quarter or maybe by year end we'll be able to give you more detailed. Rachit, uh, Rahil, Rahil. Sorry. Okay, okay. So so it's safe to say that you are. Focusing right now on profitability and maintaining the margin levels, growth will come when a certain scale is achieved for the strategies. I, I think that's it, Rajiv. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you for explaining and all the thank best. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Mr. Vinod Chandra Agarwal. An individual investor. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, sir, I have two questions. Uh, one is about uh, interest cost. So, uh, if I heard correctly, we have a gross debt of around 750 crore. On that, if on an annualized basis, we are paying 150 crore around. As an uh, interest cost, so which comes to be out like a you know, 20% per annum as an interest cost. So, and when I was looking at the annual report, uh, like our long-term debt are at an 11%. So, can you just help me to reconcile this uh, interest cost? And the second question I have is about uh, a lease, lease liability. Where uh, uh, I just want to understand, like how exactly do this lease uh, works and how it becomes our liability as a lease? Because as an individual, what I understand, when we uh, lease, when we take any lease from a, a, a property, we give them an advance for the whole, let's say, five year lease, and then for five years we don't pay a rent, and after five years we get it that uh, deposit back. But how it works in a In our business case, so if you can help me to understand that, it will be helpful. Thank you, sir. Sure, sure, Vinod ji. Thank you, Vinod ji. Vinod ji, I'll start with the lease liability question first, and then automatically it will lead to the interest also. So, if you see, we have a very, very large business of called ATM outsourcing business. In this ATM outsourcing business, we have we take various premise on lease. So, those premise on lease. Basically, the place is place where we put the ATMs, where we put our CRMs on rent and everything, uh, uh, basically on the rent which taken. So, as per the India's 116, India's 116 says that in case you have taken any such premise on lease or any other asset on lease also, if those assets are used primarily for by you only, nobody else can use, and that constitute for the long tenure of the period, running into five, seven, eight, nine, ten years also. So what the India's 116 says that you have to take a provision in the form of that. What is the future expected rent payment that you're going to do? You discount that as per the cost of borrowing today. For example, let's put 10 percent, 11 percent. That okay? For example, if I've taken one side on lease which has a rent of 10,000 rupees per month, and if I've taken that side for 10 year rent, it means I have to pay 12 lakh rupees in next 10 years. Now India says. This still, this is a 12 lakh rupees is a confirmed liability for you. You are not going to change your premise in normal scenario because it's a business loss for you if you close your side and everything. So you take this 12 lakh rupees as your lease liability. Then that net present value of that asset of the uh, payment that okay at 11 percent cost this this is going to cost me around NPV around 5 lakh rupees. You will capitalize those values in the books, and at the same point of time, you will create one other asset called right to use asset because now we want to use the right to use. So whatever asset I create on day one, right to use will go as a depreciation in my books. Whatever interest, uh, whatever lease liability that I have to create, I have to 
charge interest on that liability because that payment I have to pay. So my rent expense will get distributed into two parts. One is the interest payment, and such other part is called depreciation. So that is how this this accounting of lease goes into books. And when I distribute this into account, it says you reverse your rent from the P and L and charge this into two account. One is depreciation and one is the interest in the account. So if you see my interest for interest cost, maybe not in the half yearly number, but on the annual account, you'll see there are three four line items that comes. There is one item called lease liabilities interest. So that interest that is coming as a lease liability interest in the P and L is coming because of the lease interest. Which we have accumulated on the rent that expense that we are paying in the form of lease liability. So that is also a major delta to your first question, sir. Is though my borrowing is 750 crore on a gross basis, my interest cost is coming 150 crore. So borrowing by the interest cost is coming at 20 percent. So delta is basically interest cost that we have taken on the lease liability. So if you add lease liability, which is around 300 plus crore in the books, because I have more than 7,000 sites in my books on which I pay rent on a monthly basis. So if I do a present value of all those future rentals, the lease liability stands at somewhere around 300 crore in my balance sheet. So that 300 crore, if I take annual interest rate of 11 percent, means 33 crore or 35 crore rupees has to be apportioned to that interest. So if you remove that interest from lease liability, you will able to get those figures automatically, sir. So that is why we started with lease liability. Now this is the accounting standard, sir, followed by industry. Everywhere where there are leases in the books, whether it's the ATM industry, whether it's the Uh, I would say aviation industry or the tower industry, where wherever we see a future leases which are a kind of non-cancellable leases taken for a long-term purpose for the business purpose, the uh, India says you have to capitalize those leases in the books of accounts, and instead of charging rent as expense, you have to distribute that rent into two parts. One is called depreciation, and one is called interest expense, and that is why the interest cost also goes higher on that basis. So. Okay. Okay. So uh, that uh, actual liability that what we have uh, created for a, as a lease liability that is not the actual uh, liability taken. Actually, it, it is assumed that we are going to pay that one, right? I mean, there is no uh, something liability uh, unless we. Uh, uh, it's an gradual liability, right? It, it's not it's something like liability to be paid in next. Just like I gave example of this 10 year one. This is the li expected liability or expected payout that is going to happen from the company's bank account in the next 10 years. But since the accounting unit says you record this liability on day one, on the net present value. So what we have done is that we we did the net present value for 10 lakh or 12 lakh rupees like rent, which I said one example. Since that present value has to be recorded as a liability in books, and as I keep on adding the interest cost to it, it will automatically take me to the 12 lakh rupees of liability over 10 years. So it, 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 I would not say it's a notional liability, but it's the actual payment that we're going to do in next 10 years to be accounted in the form of lease liabilities to be paid in future on the current date. So all future liabilities in the form of rental payment has to be discounted at the current run rate, current rate, and has to be accounted in the books and has to bring to the balance sheet level. You cannot keep it off balance sheet. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Understood. Thank you for the detailed explanation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Vinod ji. Participants who may wish to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. The next question is from the line of Mr. Darshit Bora from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Sir. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thanks for the follow-up. I just uh, missed out on the SVIL revenue figures. Okay, sorry, sorry. That is the SVIL revenue figure. If you take on the gross basis for this quarter, the total revenue for each SVIL is one thousand one hundred and sixteen million rupees. If I while consolidating, if I eliminate AGS revenue, the net revenue of secure value for a non-AGS customer stands at five hundred and eleven rupees. Million rupees. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, sir. In the interest of time, I would now like to hand over the conference to the management for the closing comments. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today on our Q2 and H1 FY24 earnings call. 
we appreciate your interest in EGS Transact Technologies Limited, and we aim to act upon and leverage the opportunities on offer by capitalizing on the work done so far and the strategic direction we have taken for the future. Should you, have, should you have any further queries, please contact SGA, our Investor Relations Advisor. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. On behalf of AGS Transact Technologies Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.